Ding dong. Ask the bell ringer. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome. Good to see you. Uh, hopefully, everybody's okay with Windows open. I came over at six this morning and opened up Windows. If you don't like uh, if the uh, the Windows, we have a great new technology. It goes like this. And if you're if you're cold, um, there's tablecloths downstairs that you can wrap yourselves in. <clears throat> um, we've moved into kind of our summer worship mode, so we're using setting 10 in the ELW. That is the hymn-based setting. So all of the parts of the liturgy, the Gloria, things like that are a familiar hymn. Um, as you can hear, it's been a gangbusters year. Uh, this Last week, we were away for three days in Hershey with 85 high school students. Um, and this week, I'm responsible for graduation, so I ran graduation, um, and we had awards nights, and I've been at the high school almost every single night for the last three weeks. We still have a few days of school left. So, um, communion hymns. I still look out, and this is not a critique, and I see lots of people just sitting there. I can't do the communion hymns alone. If people sing, I'll play. Otherwise, I will just play random stuff. I need you to sing the communion hymns. I can't be any clearer than that. The communion hymns today are, I think, incredibly familiar. They are, let us break bread together and we come to the hungry feast. Um, so they're found in the ELW. Please sing along. Catch up on the news and the weather later in coffee hour. But please sing along. If you're at home watching, sing loud enough that we can hear you here. Um, just a reminder that tomorrow is Juneteenth, which is now a federal holiday, so a lot of offices are closed, um, which I think includes ours. Yes, it is. There's the answer. Um, and then my last thing is Ocean Grove has started their programming. So if you're looking for some a nice evening out, um, if you're looking for uh, spiritual refreshment, gospel music, etc., etc., things are amping up down there. You can go on their website, oceangrove.org. There's things for kids of all ages. There's summer Bible studies. There's guest speakers. There's worship in the morning and the evening. There's uh, midweek gospel music hours and organ recitals start in July every Wednesday at 7.30 in the Great Auditorium and every Saturday at noon. So take advantage of that. It's free and open to the public. It's a great resource that's local to us. So happy summer almost for us. Oh, 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 one week left. <laughs> Friends in Christ, good morning. Good morning, good morning. I'm going to go ahead and start the book around. Just say hello. Start the book for us um, on, on that side. Uh, um, blessings to everyone who uh, was coming to worship. This is a uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful day uh, weather wise. Uh, but for those of you who have not heard uh, some of the bad news or sad news that we received here at uh, at our church, um, uh, Grace Bomberger and Bomberger's uh, mom passed away uh, last week, and I've been adding to you and, and your your family. I know you shared with me, uh, even though your, your your mom attended infrequently, she was like a family member here, and Holy Trinity. So our thoughts and prayers go out to you and on the passing of your, of, of your mom, and also. Uh, Peter just shared with me uh, this morning that his uh, aunt passed away yesterday. His, her, her name was Susie? Susie, Susie Chisholm. Susie Chisholm. So uh, please uh, let us keep, let us keep Anne and, and also Peter in our, in our prayers uh, this morning. Uh, I, I know we have someone, where, where's Mark who's going to be making an, an announcement uh, this morning? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Christ is amongst us. Um, we're in the midst of our Father's Day fundraiser for the Endowment Fund. I asked 
Naomi to join me up here for a minute. And uh, we hope to see you at brunch <laughs> below. And for fa fathers, uh, all fathers, and I don't know if I got everybody, we have a little gift for you on the side. So looking forward to seeing you there. Um, we're making, today we're making a donation to Naomi for the book, uh, the scholarships fund for the vacation Bible study and to help her. <coughs> and it's kind of appropriate to do it today, this Father's Day. We all know we've been, been through enough baptisms here in the service. <laughs> We're reminded not only that it's the parent's responsibility to bring the child up in the faith and teach them how to pray, how to attend, to attend this liturgical and sacramental life of the church, and learn how the prayers and what else. The congregation is also responsible for that. So one way, one way is the endowment we could do it is help support like vacation Bible study. Well, so, this is very, very generous endowment. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And One other, we, again, we thank you for your donations. We know there's a lot of demand on your charitable giving, and we thank you for considering us and helping to continue to support the mission and ministries of this church. Of this church, sorry. And it, this is this is very generous, and we have 11 children right now signed up for day camp, and it costs $115 a child to attend day camp for a week which is really not bad, but we're charging only $50 a kid mm -hmm. to come. So because of all the scholarships and all the fundraising that we did, we're making it quite easy. Plus, we're giving out scholarships. So this, this money is going to go towards kids, but we need more kids now. So please <laughs> tell, your, tell your neighbors, tell your friends, your kids' friends, your grandchildren. Um, it's such a great camp. We have so much fun. It's here for a week from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and just, you know, if you have any questions, please ask me. So, thank you, Adele. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Well, just, just, just to, 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 to piggyback on uh, Naomi's comments, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, vacation Bible school, the camp, Camp Crossroads Day Camp is uh, August 14th through 18th. So again, if you have any uh, neighbors uh, or friends, did you like to pass along that information too? I think Naomi, do we have any flyers? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we have flyers. On the evangelism board. Okay, wonderful. But, yeah, please pass that information along to them. So friends in Christ, uh, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning. Happy Father's Day. Uh, Godfather's Day, Grandfather's Day, Stepfather's Day, or, uh, or whoever is you are being a father figure in, in their lives. Uh, happy Blessed Father's Day to you. So let us turn our attentions to Peter as he blesses us with the prelude this morning.
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have scorned your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Our gathering hymn is number 669. Rise up, O saints, verses 1, 3, and 5. Please join us in. Everybody has, has a phone. A lot of times people, they, 
They, they, they read the newspaper on their phone, and it's a lot, many times they don't pick up a newspaper, but uh, sometimes, sometimes I do happen to get a newspaper, and I, in, in the newspaper, I like to read uh, the, the sports. Uh, in the newspaper, I like to read the, uh, the, I like to read the comics, like Charlie Brown or, or, or Peanuts and some of the other comics they have in the newspaper. But mostly what I get a newspaper for is to find out information and, 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 and to learn things. I have a question I'd like to ask you this morning. And my question for you is if you were asked to tell somebody about Jesus, how would you tell them? If you were asked to tell somebody about Jesus, how could you tell? We can, we can, we, we can, we can, we, we can say, well, there's this book called the Bible, and the Bible has all of these stories about Jesus. You can, you can find out about Jesus that way, or we can just tell them some stories we know about Jesus ourselves. We can tell about how Jesus went around teaching people and healing people. And, and, and praying for people. We could talk about, maybe we could talk about Jesus dying, and we could talk about Jesus rising and ascending. We could tell people a lot about Jesus by what we say. But you know, one of the most important ways that you can tell people about Jesus is by the way you act, by the way you treat one another. Priyana, you ever call, you ever call Bo a dummy? <laughs>
So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one. Everything the Lord has spoken, we will do. Now we'll read Psalm 100. I'll read the odd verses. The congregation will respond with the uh, old print. I will start with, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker is to whom we belong. We are God's people, and the sheep of God's pastures. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving, and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. The second reading comes from the book of Romans, 5th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for all of us. Here ends today's reading. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Jesus sent out with the following instructions. 
Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals, or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if, if, if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet, and as you leave that house or town, truly I tell you, it would be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about what you are to say or what you, what you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Friends, these words are the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. And the congregation, you may be seated. <coughs> People of God, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, we are now entering the Sundays after Pentecost, sometimes called the ordinary time, or simply called the green season, as you may have noticed our pyramids in the, my, uh, my, uh, my uh, stole and chasuble are, 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 are green. And, and that, 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 that green color, I guess you could say, it sort of, it sort of represents, it represents growth. It represents growth. And, and uh, in, in, in this long uh, green season that extends uh, um, from right after Pentecost Sunday all the way through up until, I guess you could say probably until a Advent, many congregations use that time to, uh, to in particular pastors, to, to preach about evangelism, uh, what, it means to, what it means to share the good news story and how to go about sharing the good news story of Jesus Christ. And then, and then some congregations during the summer months, they, they uh, talk about, and the pastor talks about discipleship, and meaning what, what, it means to be, what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And I, and I guess you could say, I guess you could say we see a little bit of both of those things in our gospel text today. Following his calling of Matthew, the tax collector, that we heard about uh, last, last week in our gospel uh, text uh, this morning, 
Uh, rather than speaking uh, 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 simply about the, the calling this tax collector, Jesus uh, sort of now he starts to talk about um, what it means to, 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 to call all the other, other followers into the, the work uh, that he's doing. And rather than looking at this entire lengthy gospel text this morning, I'd like for us to just focus our attentions on verses 35 through 38. 30, because I think verses 35 through 38, is, is, it sort of gives us a synopsis of, of Jesus' ministry. And when we look closely uh, at those verses, we can, I guess we could say that, that, that they could actually be broken down into uh, three different parts. The first part sort of summarizes the work of Jesus. We read that Jesus, after calling Matthew, he goes around into the towns, curing every disease and sickness among the people. But he not only does that, he also goes through these towns proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. Proclaiming the good news of God. Jesus identifies with sinners and tax collectors. And, and, he, and he teaches his hearers uh, that, uh, that the, the, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And, the, the, and Jesus, I guess you could say, he lives out. He, he exemplifies what, what, this, 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 what this kingdom literally looks like. The second part... The second part of those verses, 35 through 38, uh, focuses on the heart of Jesus. When Jesus sees the crowd, he has, he has compassion for them. Our scripture text says, when Jesus sees the people, he looks at them and they look like a sheep without a shepherd. Matthew in our text says that the people are harassed and literally helpless. An, an, another Bible translation that I read during the past week, it says, the people were literally fatigued. Fatigued. And if you were, can recall last week when I talked about the calling of, of Matthew to tax collector and how tax collectors weren't looked upon favorably in, in Jesus' time because they sort of collaborated with the Roman government to oppress the, 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 the Jewish people. Well, when our text this morning talks about the people being harassed and helpless, they're literally being, they're literally, literally under the thumb of, of, of the Roman government. They're literally being fatigued by the Roman government. And when Jesus sees them, he has compassion for them. And then our third part of verses 35 through 80, 38, speaks about the call of Jesus. Jesus says to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. <clears throat> Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers out into the vineyard or out into his harvest. In, in, in other words, what Jesus is doing here in this call of Jesus is he's inviting his disciples to do the work that he does to cure the sick, to raise the dead, to heal the lepers, and proclaim the good news of God's kingdom. I guess when you really look at uh, this uh, entire reading this morning, it's really a story about the, about the mission of Jesus. Jesus calls his disciples to undertake the work that he does. But it's also... I guess you could say it's also a mission that Jesus calls us to undertake also. I don't mean, I don't mean literally curing the sick or, or, or raising the dead. No, the mission of Jesus, the mission that Jesus calls us to this morning is to share the good news of God's love. To share the good news of God's love. To like, like I said to the young people this morning, to tell a story about Jesus. Uh, and many times, just telling the story, we, 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 we do it in our, in our actions. In our actions. 
I, I, I remember one of the members of the church that I served in North Carolina came up to me one day and said, you know what, Pastor? Uh, uh, we might be the only Bible that a person sees. We might be the only Bible that a person sees. Meaning that our, our actions, the way, the, way we treat, the way we treat one another, it needs to exemplify Jesus. It, it, it needs to be what, what many call being Christ-like. Thinking about that church in Greensboro, North Carolina, um, there, not not too far from the church, there was a, a there was a strawberry a, a strawberry farm, and it with and it it, it it was it was a, a strawberry farm where they had workers that would pick the pick the strawberries, and then there was a section in the strawberry patch or the strawberry farm that was a, a, a pick your own, meaning you would go and you would pick your own strawberries, and this this farm was massive, it was it was huge, and I and and. and Sometimes you, I, I, I would go to, to the, the area where they had to pick your own and they would have strawberries that unfortunately would be a little bit, oh, a little bit overripe and would be sort of like rotting, rotting on the vine. Jesus said, Jesus said that the, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, send laborers out into the harvest. Friends in Christ, this day, 2,000 years later, after Jesus says those words in Scripture about the harvest being plentiful. Friends, they're, I guess you could say, like those, like those strawberries rotting on the vine, they're, they're, they're folks out in our society that need to hear the good news of Jesus. We, there are folks in our society today that are walking around hopeless, helpless, and in despair. But whatever, whatever situations they're dealing with, but there are also people that need to hear the good news of Jesus. There are people that need to hear this, this good news story of Jesus' mercy, Jesus' love, and Jesus' forgiveness. How many of you remember that, that, that show, Mission Impossible? You remember that show, Mission Impossible? Well, friends in Christ, today Jesus gives us a mission. He gives us a mission, but the mission is not impossible. The mission is, is, is possible because we have the Spirit of Jesus with us. We have the Spirit of Jesus with us, in us, moving through us, and with us everywhere we go. So friends in Christ, yes, the harvest is plentiful. That's why Christ sends us out into the harvest. This day and every day to share the good news, to, hear, to share the wonderful, wonderful story of Jesus' love. Let's be about doing it. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of the day is I Love to Tell the Story. And just a quick tidbit about it. It's interesting, every hymn has a, a hymn tune name. Um, this one's hymn tune name is Hanky. Um, and it's named after Catherine Hanky. It was composed in Philadelphia. She was an evangelist. And she was away and on a mission trip and got very sick. And during that time started writing a lot of hymnody. And a lot of our American hymnody comes from the Northeast, Philadelphia. Um, one of the great Presbyterian ministers, William H. Stone, and, and some others throughout the tri-state. And even from New Jersey. Fanny Crosby was a local to this area wrote a lot of gospel hymnody. Um, and so this, is, this tune, Hanky, is by Catherine Doan. She wrote it when she was ill, and, and it's a confession about how we are called, just like Christ, to go out and heal, not to judge people, to work together, to come together and bring people to Christ. So that's why it gets its name, um, not literally a hanky, but because of Catherine Hanky. So would you please join me in singing number 661, 
I love to tell the story. Hear our prayer. For fathers and father figures, we pray. 
Console all who long to be fathers, children estranged from their fathers, anyone grieving the death of the father, and fathers who have lost a child. Draw near to all for, for whom this day stirs up difficult emotions. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, that you give strength and courage to those who are sick, shut in, or for all in need. We especially pray for Phyllis, Gail, Terry, Linda, Fran, Loris, Larry, Joe, Elaine, Nancy, Andrea, Ryan, Leanne, Yamina, Brittany, Bill, Barbara, Johanna, AJ, Mary, John, Jenny, and Bruce. We pray for Linda D for healing and comfort, for Barbara and Rachel for peace and healing. We pray for Ann Baumberger and family as they mourn the passing of her mother Grace. We pray for Peter Isherwood and his family for the passing of his aunt Susie Chisholm. We pray for all fathers, grandfathers, godfathers, and stepfathers celebrating Father's Day today. For those whose lives are affected by senseless gun violence in their schools, workplaces, or homes. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia and all places around the world affected by war and unrest. We pray for refugees and immigrants and those who come to their aid. We pray for the unity of this church and its mission. God, in your mercy. For all the saints who give thanks, receive into your eternal care all those who have died, and fill us with hope that does not disappoint. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. And people of God, may the peace of Christ be with you always. And now may we take a few moments to share Christ's peace with one another. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. <laughs>
invite you to please stand if you're able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, may he strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Thank you, generous God, for the refreshment you have received, we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 And I invite the congregation to please remain standing for uh, for a, a special Father's Day prayer for all of our fathers and grandfathers and godfathers and uh, stepfathers out in, uh, in our congregation and who are viewing us online. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this Father's Day, we're especially thankful for the fathers and the father figures in our lives. Hold them in your good care. Give them patience, wisdom, strength, that through their families they may experience your unconditional love. Bless those who long to be fathers, and for those whom this day is difficult. Amen. Amen. Friends in Christ, I invite you to receive a blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest sea, bless, keep, and sustain you now to the end of the age. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn is number 535. We sing the refrain twice each time we get to it. Number 535. Hallelujah. We sing your praises. Thank you all.